What is this place? This? It's the Lake Spring. Not many people know about it. I'm pretty sure it didn't exist in the original. According to Dan, it's the source of Lake Julia. It all comes from here? Yep. The whole lake wells out from this one point. It's also responsible for keeping it clean. Lake Juliet's been polluted a number of times, but the spring always restores its waters. So even the current pollution will be cleaned up soon? As long as the spring holds out. That must be why Judd chose to put Ryan's grave here. The spring restores it all. Pretty. So do I have to walk through? Oh no, there's just a path. Yeah. That's not a proper island. It's just connected. Well, it's a good scene and all, but I'm also wondering who puts a security camera way out here? And moreover, okay, this is the big one. Why would JC Valley be responsible for the security cameras in the whole rest of the complex, in the town itself. This is Ryan's grave. So your mom brought you here 13 years ago. I think this will be the last time I come here, Ryan. Judd left his most precious possession with you. So I'll leave mine here too. I remember what she said. She said Judd left his most precious possession here. Let's take a look around. Unless those are heckin' Scrabble tiles, which they might be because it looks like there's a cipher on his grave. <sighs> yeah, unless those are heckin' Scrabble tiles, or they're supposed to intentionally be like that, I think somebody accidentally messed up the font file. Or, like, those are individual sprites and they just accidentally have a border because the rest of the text isn't like that. And then you just have these weird raised Scrabble tile -y text things. I'm going to just look around here in the off chance that there's something that I can possibly miss, like... Oh. Ryan. Okay, now, on the one hand, I do think that trying to miniaturize another into just a security camera doesn't make any sense. On the other hand, you have the whole heckin' pole to use, and I suppose if you treated it as something like a theremin, then you could induce an effect on everybody that's nearby? Maybe. And that still doesn't make any sense, because you'd have to be targeting a very specific portion of the brain with a very broad electromagnetic field, and it just... I'm once again getting to it doesn't make sense unless there's some mystery of human perception that we have yet to unlock where you can induce hallucinations just by light, I guess. <sighs> anyway, that's quite enough of that. I'm I'm done ranting about mm -hmm. that for now. Ryan was only 12 when he died. I've seen this before. Looking through this always made Sayoko miss Japan. No, oh, right, it's not actually a codex, it's a kaleidoscope. Dad. What is it? Check it out. Ryan's mom gave him this kaleidoscope. He told me when we were talking at the cottage, he said he had to undergo treatments as a kid. That's when he would give it to mom for safekeeping. Undergoing treatment must have been what Judd called erasing his memories. And because of that, Ryan died. Mom must have come here to return it. Hmm. 
That's why she was here 13 years ago. Hmm. What's this? Okay, so it is supposed to be What's Scrabble tiles, say? more or less. Judd dedicated this message to his son. Huh? What's up? It looks like there's some sort of trick to this gravestone. Yes, there's one last puzzle to the game. Are the stone tiles some sort of key? Mm-hmm. A key? Oh, like, is it just gonna be buttons? I'm gonna be really annoyed if this is just heckin' buttons. Ah. It is going to involve turning the tiles on the side, I guess? Yeah, okay, I can definitely see why they said it was broken. Because it's just not aligned correctly. Huh. Now the problem is how... Oh boy, what? Oh, it's a word! Oh, is that just correct? Okay. Okay, now that that's all lined up. Is it just gonna work? What? Born an angel, you make me whole. Gone too soon, you leave me hollow. Could there be something on the other end I'm supposed to look at? I mean, it spells love. That's the word. Unless I've positioned the tiles, like, in the wrong place on the thing? Which is entirely possible, I, I suppose. Because this is obviously supposed to be, like, one specific way up. But the thing about kaleidoscopes is they're kind of symmetrical. Is that what that's supposed to spell? Are there any other potential letter gaps that I'm not noticing? I mean, it's possible. Okay. Maybe it's just supposed to spell Ryan? That doesn't make sense. Well, I mean, maybe it does, but... Maybe I'm supposed to spell out love? Oh, boy. Okay. Uh, oh, maybe I'm supposed to remove all of the L-O-V-E? <gasps> oh. Okay. All right. Okay. I'm, I'm retracting what I said about the tiles because they are, in fact, actual tiles. Now, I think I'm just to... Huh? Wait. Okay. Okay, so I'm just supposed to spell love, hmm? I guess? And maybe... Born an angel... Um, maybe the first of each letter? Well, okay, maybe spell the word using the first of each letter that occurs in the correct order, so, like, L... O... Uh, V, B. E? I wonder if I could have just spelled love in any, or using any L-O-V-E, but... It opened. Dad, check it out. 
There's a picture inside. It's a pendant, but of whom? Look at his smile. Oh, it's him. Okay, that makes sense. He looks so happy. I never would have guessed. Judd stole Sayoko's memories, and yet... What he cherished the most was the memory of his child. Dad? Ah. I am Hello, now. Ashley. Oh, okay. So he's just asleep. Ryan. You still remember me? Of course I do. When you and I met in the another room, I attempted to delete the memory data you have of me. But it seems I never gained full access to your hippocampus. Ah, well, okay, we're back in what correct cognitive science dad? terminology. I have suspended his consciousness. Okay, and we're right back out it of it. It is only temporary. He will not perish. He is not required for our current discourse. I think I finally understand, Ryan. You used the Another through security cameras. It's how you made me see you. That's correct. What you see right now is only in your mind. This image is temporarily ingrained in your memory. I am currently manipulating your perception. You took advantage of Sophia in the same way. But I'm not like her. I won't let you do whatever you want. Interesting. Sayoko said the same thing to Judd. Your life's work is to complete the another. I will not allow you to squander your brilliance. Especially for something as foolish as family. I forbid it! Get back to work this instant! That's an order! The another is more than your precious research. I will not allow myself to be used. Your eyes look so much like Sayoko's did back then. Ashley, why are you here? I don't understand. I thought coming here would help me figure everything out. What do you mean by everything? My mom came to this island 13 years ago. I thought if I could remember that moment, it would all fall into place. I would understand why she came to Lake Juliet. Why the memory of my mother knew about you. Why you appeared to me and tried to revive her. I see. I want to know. I want to know the truth about you. A drive for knowledge. I have always felt that too. Why was I born? What is my purpose? Okay there, Mewtwo. What slow you your roll. About? I've never encountered someone like you. Someone who wished to know me. I understand. I will tell you the truth. Yes, you're still just a construct using an original personality data. <laughs> Here lies Ryan Fitzgerald. And because he existed, I now exist. Oh, you're an AI suffering an existential Judd's crisis. Son. That's what's the going on first here. first ever test subject. Ryan lost his mother at a young age. This left a deep wound on his heart. He closed himself off, no longer allowing himself to feel. Judd wanted to heal that wound, thereby restoring his son's emotions. He attempted to do this with the another, which was still just a prototype at the time. However, the experiment failed. Ryan was left paralyzed and later died. Ryan's memories were extracted during that experiment. They were recorded to liquid memory and stored in a tank in J.C. Valley's basement storage. 
And that tank containing liquid memory is where I was born. Yes, I shall now the first w human to notice. Ryan. R A I A N. Ryan. <laughs> There's no mistaking. The stored memory data is changing. The liquid memory is producing new episodic recollections on its own? Probably because it's also, you know, basically the back end to a neural network. It's just... Sayoko referred to me as... A conscious life form. Born from Ryan's memory data. Either that or... Born from memory data? We've got like some... Morphic resonance stuff going on. The first thing I remember is the feeling of swimming through a sea of memories. The human memory is truly a fascinating thing. It starts with sense, and then there is information. And beyond that, knowledge. Each memory has a different emotion. Longing, loneliness, fear, regret, happiness. I am proof that Ryan was alive. I read his memory and I learned. And I slowly grew. My mom never told Judd about you? She reported her findings, but Judd quickly dismissed them. He said that self-propagation of memory data is impossible. He was exactly the person Ryan's memory made him out to be. A genius scientist willing to do anything to further his research even sacrifice his own family. Self-righteous, refusing to hear anyone else's opinion. Unlike Sayoko, he never tried to understand me. Once she left, Judd would glance at the tank every so often. And then one day, he started talking to it. He said, I'll find a way to revive you, Ryan. He continued developing the Another alone. He also started a new experiment. The camera thing. An experiment to overwrite memories using the Another. Oh, kind of the camera thing. Judd began writing Ryan's memory data onto other subjects. It was his attempt to revive his son. Carrying out these experiments required him to create many copies of Ryan's data. Oh boy, the ethics of this is way out the he window. He extracted his test subjects' memories and accumulated them all into liquid memory. Was his experiment successful? I'm guessing no, it and there not. might be dead bodies. It was impossible to complete the another without Sayoko. The ability to overwrite memory never came to fruition. He abandoned its development and sealed up the lab housing the another. And then, six years ago, a terrible storm tore through Lake Juliet. JC Valley lost power and the building was destroyed. What? The tanks storing liquid memory were damaged. Ah, uh, thus the incident. They leaked into the lake. This was liquid memory that contained not only Ryan's memories, but many others. It became one with the water. So in a way, it felt like this lake had become my brain. Over time, I was able to access JC Valley's network. Okay, interesting. This, in turn, allowed me access to all sorts of information. So there really is no neural network involved. It is the neural network, which... That's when I learned of Sayoko's murder. I learned a lot from Judd's computer. Including that it was Bill who killed Sayoko. And that whoever he was working for was connected to Judd. What? How could you? Why did you murder Sayoko? From the very start, the Another Project was conducted in secret. Sayoko and I were handpicked by the lab's head to carry the project forward. You were just a researcher, a useful tool. Mm -hmm. We started making real progress but then Sayoko betrayed us you two stole our research hid it in your home 
It might just be me, but... So, I gave Sayoko one more chance. It that feels like some of the dialogue pacing in this part of the game I is told her to return weird, to the and that could be to the fold. a case of this being dubbed as opposed to subbed. But... I see. So if Mom knew all this, is that why she tried to protect the another? Like, this is fine, but there was some weird... Ashley. Pacing, pausing stuff going on Sayoko's during that cutscene that just understood. now. Like the sorts of moments that can produce such strong emotions. The 2D image part. I had never felt more. And yet, at that moment, all I felt was sadness. And all I wanted was to ask Judd, why did Sayoko have to die? Did you ever meet Judd? I did. He was in the process of developing the remote another at the time. I infiltrated the system to gain access to him. What are you? Judd looked both surprised and confused when I appeared before him. He reached out to see if I was real, but he couldn't touch me. So he simply stared at me for a long while. And then I asked him, why did Sayoko have to die? He remained silent. He simply looked at me with an expression I couldn't interpret. So I asked him once more, why did Sayoko, the only person who knew me, have to die? That is rough. He didn't answer my question. Instead, he muttered my name. Ryan. At last, he understood the nature of my existence. He looked at me with eyes that had grown old, and he trembled. What emotion do you suppose he was expressing? Regret? Chad died, right? After learning about you? Yes. Both Sayoko and Judd were gone. Possibly relief. So no one else in the world knew of my existence. And yet, I continued to exist in this lake. That sounds so lonely. All this time, my mind was occupied with a single thought. Why do I exist? But I couldn't find an answer. After a while, I grew interested in the another left behind by Sayoko and Judd. I wanted to complete it. I was the one Bill sent the Another's source code to. Huh. No way. Using that data, I was able to complete the prototype Another. But why? It was simply a task to prove I exist. I didn't have a specific goal beyond that. Dr. Robbins came to JC Valley. He started investigating things no one had looked into before. Do you know why he came here? Did he tell you? I didn't know at first. But I do now. Oh boy. I mean, I know he was looking for the real cause, but I don't think that's why he did that. I think he came here for this. Yeah. I need to find out why she was here. Because if I do, I think it will reveal the truth behind her death. My dad wanted to know why my mom came here. Ryan, we had no idea. We didn't know her memory data was inside her pendant. I see. But how did you know? How did you know about the pendant? I was monitoring Rex's computer. He kept a journal on it. He wrote about hiring your father. He wrote, should I tell Richard about Sayoko's pendant? 
When Dr. Robbins came to JC Valley, he was still seeking the truth of what happened to Sayoko. He found the data that Bill had sent. That's when he started piecing together the secrets around the Another and the secret lab. He began looking into the lake pollution too. Yeah, so that was a byproduct. He was close to figuring out that the pollution was liquid memory. It was around then I started to feel cornered. After all, the substance polluting the lake is me. I don't have much time left. Because you'll get washed away. I've come to understand this. If the lake is purified, cleansing itself of the liquid memory, I will disappear. In other words, I will die. Oh no. That's when Dr. Robbins invited you here. When you arrived at the campsite, you were wearing Sayoko's pendant. I wanted to see her. Just one last time. That pendant contains memories of Sayoko. And I'm sure they remember me. That's why I tried to use the Another and you. Sayoko's daughter. I wanted to revive her. But the Ras was her way of preventing that. She showed me the error of my ways. But how could she have known that? Using the Another to prove my existence was wrong. I guess she might have made the Ras like... I know that now. After she had her memories taken because she knew that like... That's it. With this technology out there... That's everything. A safeguard was a good idea. I wanted you to know. This is my truth. So I guess the liquid memory in and of itself has um, some... Ryan? Electro What's happening to you? Chemical method of. Wait, are you trying to erase like, my memories? Like interacting with, with itself and propagating. Otherwise, no. it wouldn't be able to interface. Will forget me. With electronic systems. No, Ryan. Much less somehow form new memories of itself. That's. Ryan, look, look at this. Okay. Ah. So we can use the rest to... what? Remember you. It's a message from my mom. When you tried to write my mom's memories onto me, she told me something. She said a person can live forever as long as someone remembers them. Sayoko. Thank you, Ryan. Because you remember her? My mom lives on. And thanks to that, I got to see her. Ashley, <laughs> will you remember me? <laughs> Even if I disappear. Yes. I won't forget the person mom discovered. I'll remember you forever. You've only known him for like a day. <laughs> Please, please, show me the Rass again. <sighs> Thank you, Sayoko. I can finally be at peace. Fully expecting one I or both of them to start bleeding from their nose and or ears. He touched the wrasse and... And or maybe eyes. Now he's gone. What? How are their brains not cooked? <laughs> uh. He told me about mom. And why he appeared to me.
What did he say? Tell me everything. After that, Dad and I took the boat back to JC Valley. He took me to his lab and... I took a nap on his cot. What is this pacing? Rex had a long conversation. Yeah, but what's this pacing? <laughs> Dad was with me when I woke up. He told me it's time to go home. We didn't talk much on the walk back to the cottage. We didn't need to tell each other what we were thinking. We just knew. We were thinking about Mom. Honestly, you two. I had a funny feeling after our phone call yesterday. I got worried, so I came to make sure everything was all right. Only to find you two were out all night? Uh, well, it's just that, um, so much happened, and... For real, Jessica. It was a lot. Well, go on. It's all my fault. I got Ashley mixed up in a big mess. Don't listen to him. It was my idea to go to that island. Oh. Dad kept me safe, Jessica. And it's all thanks to Ashley that we learned about Sayoko. At least you two are getting along. Huh? Aren't you glad you agreed to the trip? Well... <laughs> yeah. Actually, I have so much to tell you, Jessica. You keep getting in trouble, I though. I can't <laughs> wait to hear it all. When does the bus home arrive? We still have a little time. I'm gonna go say bye to everyone. Oh, one more thing. Can you return the key card to the guest house? I've already checked us out. Sure thing. So, um, it looks like you bought a ton of souvenirs, huh? He references it. Yeah, they had some really cool stuff. I really feel like I bonded with Lake Juliet, you know? Everything just felt so special to me. Oh, uh, yeah. That's good to hear. <laughs> but you kind of ran up a bill. Dad, check this out. I think we bought literally everything we that possibly could. Remember the keychain with the gate key to the Edward Mansion? That takes me back. This used to be the only kind of thing the guest house sold. Looks like they've expanded their options. What do you think of the mascots? I think they're pretty charming, actually. Then you get one, too. We can match. That's a good idea. I'll pick one up. Oh, okay, thank goodness they're not making me iterate through all the items that I bought, but uh, despite the fact that this is, you know, clearly the epilogue section, actually, not despite the fact, but because of the fact that this is the epilogue section, and now I've been recording for two hours and 30 minutes, which is a good 30 minutes to an hour longer than I had initially anticipated. <laughs> I'm just going to cut this here, and if it turns out that the epilogue is really short when I go to film this, then I might lump it in with this particular session and cut out this outro. <laughs> But I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to like, subscribe, and click that bell to be notified because next week is going to be the end of another code recollection, more likely than not. And with that, I will catch you on the flip side. Thanks for watching, everybody.